Hello everyone, this art project today is made especially for my kindergarten friends who are really busy watching their caterpillars turn into butterflies. And I thought how fun it would be to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of art projects that you can do when you're finished, okay? So let's read The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. Now, if you remember in class, we were working on the very angry ladybug. Do you remember that Eric Carl is the man who makes his own painted paper and then puts it all together to make a picture? So none of it is just straight paper. It's all beautifully made and printed paper. So look at all of this is printed paper. So I want you to think about how you can make your own paper at home to put together your own caterpillar. That's what we're going to work on today. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle for his sister, Krista. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. I think I'll move this up a little bit for you. There we go. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but, yep, he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. What do you think is gonna happen next? On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. This is fun how the whole book has holes in it where the caterpillar ate through. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again and the caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Oh, and now he wasn't hungry anymore and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside it for more than two weeks and then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out and <gasps> he was a beautiful butterfly. Boys and girls, look at all the colors that Eric Carl used to make his butterfly beautiful. All of the painted paper it has more painted paper cut out and put on top of it. Isn't it so beautiful? Oh my goodness. That story about the little caterpillar is something I want to use for us to make our own very hungry caterpillar today. So I'm going to show you a couple of different things. I'm going to show you how to make a caterpillar and some different ways to make the caterpillar. And then I'm going to show you ways that you can make a beautiful butterfly. And we're going to use things we have at home because we're not at school. If we were at school, we would use painted paper. But because we're at home and we don't have all of those items at home, we're going to go ahead and try to use something, the things that we might have. So what I want you to do is to find your sketchbook and I want you to have a grown-up help you take out 
a page of the sketchbook. So they might be able to come in and rip a page out for you, but I want you to have a piece of paper that's not attached to your sketchbook. Now, maybe you're really lucky and you have extra paper at home. You can just grab one of those pieces of paper to make your very hungry caterpillar, okay? If you are really lucky and you have construction paper at home, like this kind, construction paper is paper that is just colored, you could find one piece of green paper. If you had one piece of green paper, then you could make a leaf. If you have already made, um, what did I make? Oh, the bunny rabbit. If you made the rabbit, you might have made some shaving cream paper at home. So that's one of the videos I have up on our YouTube channel is how to make shaving cream paper. And it looks like this. And I used shaving cream and I used um, food coloring. So if you want to go back and pause this video and go learn how to make this, you could make some shaving cream paper. It's really fun. And it makes beautiful paper, like painted paper that we could use in our, so this leaf is made out of shaving cream paper. This leaf right here is made out of construction paper. Now, if you don't have either of those things, do not worry. I have something I'm gonna show you how to make your own painted paper. So here we go, we're gonna do that first. So I'm gonna just keep this leaf right here, but if I didn't have green paper at home, I would go ahead and take one of my own pieces of paper, and I'm just gonna use half of it for right now. And what I'm gonna do is take three different colors of green. If you only have one, then just use one. Maybe use uh, green with a little bit of a yellow. This is a yellow green, but you could just use green with yellow. And I want you to go through on half of your paper. Remember, half would be if I went like this to my paper and folded it. That would be half my paper. I'll do that just to show you. I'm gonna save my other half. And I would take half my paper, and I'm gonna make designs all over it. Boys and girls, your designs can look however you want them to. Now, for your grown-ups that are doing art with you right now, if they need to pause this video at any time so you can catch up, I want you to pause the video because I might be going a whole lot faster than you can do it, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna use my other green. It's, look, this one looks a little bit yellow, but I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna just put more lines on it. Boys and girls, it doesn't matter what kind of marks you put on there. We're making our own painted paper like this, okay? So I've gone through and I've put on marks and I even have another green, so if I wanted to, I could go put that. This is the pack of crayons I have. It has 24 in it, so I have these three greens came from that pack. Oops, I broke it. Do these still work? Yes, they do. All right, so now I have green all over my piece of paper and I need to paint it to make a green background. So I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like when we're done. It's gonna look something like this and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you have two choices. One, if you have watercolors at home, you can open up your watercolors and get your paintbrush and water and you can pick your green and you can start painting it, okay? Look at how crayon just like oil pastel and watercolor are not friends. So look, it's not gonna stick. All right, or if I don't have watercolor at home like this, I'm gonna show you a really cool way to do this. You can get a piece of tin foil. You need to ask a grown up to help you. Get a piece of tin foil, and then I want you to find your green marker. So I have, let me see, I have a whole bunch of green markers up here. I'm gonna grab this green marker, and I'm gonna color on my tin foil just in a little blob. And I'm gonna get my paintbrush and I'm gonna get my water and I'm gonna dip it in there and look it, it makes paint. So now I can use that to paint my paper. There's a different color green than this one. But I can go ahead and paint, paint, paint my whole background of my paper. And now I have green. I have my own green painted paper, kind of like Eric Carle would use to make his art. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to the side. Now, I wanna let it dry. And when I, while I let it dry, I'm gonna do, after it's done, I'm gonna do two things. I wanna cut a leaf out, and maybe I wanna make another piece for my leaf. And then I'm gonna use, oops, mine came unglued. And I'm gonna use some of it to make my circles for my caterpillar, okay? So because I have this leaf already done, this is what I'm gonna use, but here's what I would do. I'm going to turn my paper over. You ready? 
and I would take a crayon and I'm gonna draw the shape of a leaf, so watch. So I'm either doing this on my green paper or I'm gonna do it on my homemade painted paper, okay? Or I can do it on, remember I told you, you could do it on shaving cream paper too. And I'm gonna make my leaf and I would make it, I'm gonna start at the top, very close to the top of my piece of paper and I'm gonna make it make a stretched out rainbow. Can you hear my cuckoo clock in the background? It's gonna sing now. We'll listen to it. Always makes me happy to hear that sound. Okay, so I have my stretched out rainbow and I'm gonna go on the other side and make another stretched out rainbow. Makes the shape of a football, doesn't it? Okay, and then I would use my scissors and I would cut that rainbow out. I mean that rainbow, that leaf, silly me. Cut my leaf out. And so boys and girls, that would give me my leaf that I can put my caterpillar on, okay? So there is a caterpillar um, leaf that's all ready to go. Now, I wanna use some of my leftover paper if I have any, or I wanna make some more. And the reason why I had you do this separately is because, do you see how one is darker and one's lighter? I don't really wanna do my caterpillar the same on top of my green leaf. So I would wanna pick a different marker and make my paint like that so that when I put, when I cut my caterpillar out to put them on, I have different paper. If I had green, I could cut my caterpillar out of green to put on there. If I had shaving cream paper, I could cut my caterpillar out of shaving cream paper. So there's so many choices to make our caterpillar, okay? You could even just paint green or use your marker and just color green and you could make those. But I have to make circles now like this to make my caterpillar, all right? So I have my green paper, it's ready to go, and I'm gonna take something to trace. So I have a lid. These are lids to um, spices. So if you can ask um, a grown-up to get you a, a small lid, we don't want a big lid. I have a cup right here. Do you see how big that is? I don't want it that big. It won't, I won't be able to make a very big caterpillar. And I don't want it so tiny that I can't trace it. So if you have, look at my tiny paper cup would work or a lid works really well. So what I would do is I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna use my black crayon and I'm gonna trace my lid and I wanna do it four times. So I'm gonna make four caterpillar circles, okay? I have to finish painting mine. You've already painted yours, I hope, and it dried. I didn't get to finish painting mine. So I need to make four of these and then I'm gonna cut them out. So once I have four cut out, I can make my caterpillar. Now you're gonna say, but Mrs. Hillman, what about his red face? Don't you worry, we'll get there in just a minute. So I have my green. Remember I wanted it different than that color, so I painted it down here. All right, I have to let that dry. So I'm gonna show you how to make his red face. I'm gonna use some of my leftover scraps. It's always good to save extra small pieces of paper. And for this one, I'm gonna need a red crayon. So I just am gonna reach into my crayon container and get a red crayon out. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but look at how I'm only doing it in a small part because boys and girls, I only need a little tiny circle to put right here, about that big. So I know I only have to paint a little spot on my paper red. I could maybe even put some white on here if I wanted, if I was getting tricky. Right now, I'm going to do that same trick again where I used my um, crayon on my tin foil. But if you have watercolor, just use your watercolor. Okay, this this is faster. But if you don't have watercolor, then I want you to do the marker. Okay, so I'm just going to get my watercolor, making my own paint, and I'm going to paint it on there. So now I have a red head for my caterpillar. I'm gonna let that dry. And I think now this is probably dry enough and I'm gonna go ahead and trace two more. And then I want you to have a grown up come and help you cut it out. Now I want you to do the cutting, but I want them to watch you to make sure you're being safe, okay? I'm using grown up scissors. You probably have a different kind of scissors at home. I know that my kids use different scissors at our house too. So I'm just gonna do my very, look at, I'm taking my time 
to cut around the circles of my caterpillar's body so I have some nice circles to put him together. Okay? And I would be able to put him now. Those are pretty similar, aren't they? So maybe if I were doing it a different, I would put different designs on it. So you can see it. I'm going to put him on this leaf right here. All right, you can see him better when I do that. Um, and I'm going to do how many did I say? Four. So I'm going to do four circles and I'm going to cut them all out. Taking my time. Pause the video if you need time to cut out. Because remember, I'm going to cut a lot faster than you. Because I've been doing this for so many more years, right? Maybe after you're done making your caterpillar, you can go get a snack like the caterpillar did. Which of those snacks do you think you would eat? Hmm. I think I have to look back there, but I think I like the pickle. Is that kind of funny? Or the watermelon? Mmm. Okay, so I have four circles for my caterpillar, but I need to give them a head. So remember I made that tiny piece of red over here? Put that down. Trace around the edge. I'm gonna cut that out. Okay. I hope you guys get to see your butterflies come out of their cocoon soon. I think that's so neat that you're doing that. Okay, so now I have my four body parts of my caterpillar and here's my head. Now our favorite thing, we get to use glue. So I'm gonna use this, if you have a glue stick at home and you wanna use that, you can use that too. I'm gonna go ahead and do dot, dot, not a lot. I'm gonna pull all of these off and I'm going to go one, now you could just take white paper and color it green if you needed to and make your circles out of that. You could take your white paper and make a pattern of different greens like crisscrosses or zigzags and those could all be part of your design. Okay, so now my little caterpillar is ready for a face. So I'm just gonna take my crayon. I'm just gonna give him two little legs down here, two little legs up here. And I'm going to look, if I look at my book, he doesn't have as many, but if I wanted to give him a little fuzzy, oops, you can't see that. Look at look how Eric Carl drew fuzzies. That almost looks like it was done with crayon. So you could do blue and red and yellow fuzzies around the top of yours. And you can give him two eyes. I'm going to give him one eye and I'm going to make a circle go around it because that's kind of how he is. I could cut paper out too if I wanted to. And then he needs some antennas. Just straight little antennas like that. But if you wanted to give him the little um, fuzz that's on him, you could. That makes him a furry caterpillar. Okay, so this would be our caterpillar. He can be our first one. And if you look at the one I did earlier, you can see that he looks a little bit different because of the background, okay? All right. Now, after our very hungry caterpillar crawls through everything and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats, he turns into a butterfly. And when we look at Eric Carle's butterfly in the book, it is made with so many colors and so much painted paper that's layered on top of each other. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can make a butterfly and make it with painted paper, okay? So you can do this one in your sketchbook if you want to, or you can ask an adult to tear a page of your sketchbook out, but this can be done just straight in your sketchbook. Okay, I'm gonna show you a different, a couple different ways. Two things that you might need, one would be a coffee filter, and the second thing you might wanna try is a piece of tin foil. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch me do it first, and then I want you to decide how you might wanna do it, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do it first. So just sit back and watch for a couple minutes, okay? So what the first thing I would do is I would get a new piece of paper. So I told you to go to your sketchbook and get a new piece of paper out. Now, when I look at my Eric Carle butterfly, I can make him, I can make the shape of my butterfly just like my Eric Carle one. I can show you how to do that one. Or we can make a butterfly like these. And these butterflies just have one long skinny body and they have two round wings at the top and two round wings at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you how I made this one in a minute. This one is the same, but I just drew some designs on him. 
and I'm gonna show you how to make this one in just a minute too, okay? So I'm gonna start by drawing the shape of my butterfly. I'm gonna use a Sharpie, but you can use a crayon. Crayons work just the same. The first step we're gonna to do to make our butterfly, and this is the part, you can come back and watch me draw this again in a minute, okay? Just watch me draw. I'm just gonna draw my butterfly in one big piece. Now, if you wanted to make your butterfly in multiple pieces, you could. If you wanted to give him some lines in him, you could, okay? And then I wanna make my butterfly's wings. So I have a couple of choices. This one just has two wings on the side. Eric Carls has a lot of bumps. So I'm gonna do one like Eric Carls right now. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and bring one out and I'm gonna make one part of a wing here and another part of the wing here and another part of his wing and a final part of his wing. Now here's the tricky part. Butterflies are symmetrical. So that means they're the same on both sides. So I wanna make sure I take these shapes and make them the same on the other side of my butterfly. So to do that, I'm gonna turn my paper like this because this makes it easier for me to see what the same would be. So I would draw it out one, two, three, four. And those are pretty much the same. They're not exactly, but it's pretty much. And this would be symmetrical. I would give him some antenna, two little eyes. Okay, now my next thing I could do if I wanted is to put shapes inside. When Eric Carl designed his, he did his with multiple layers of paper. That means he cut out one paper and then he put more on top of it. Because we're at home and we're not at school, we don't have all of those um, materials. So I'm going to show you how to kind of make him look fancy. Okay. The first way I'm going to show you how to decorate him is to put designs inside him. Okay. So I might just do something like this. Not super fancy. I'm just making shapes. But remember, I'm going to do the same on both sides. Right? Maybe on this one I'll put some. I'm just making regular shapes. I'm making them longer or shorter. Boys and girls, you will not go as fast as I'm going. I don't want you to go this fast. I want you to take your time. So remember, you're just watching me right now. When I'm all done, then you can go ahead and do yours. And you get your materials. I'm gonna show you different ways to do it. Okay. He has all kinds of decoration on him, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do for this guy. To make him like this butterfly is, I'm gonna need a piece of tin foil. And remember we already used that tin foil when we were um, making our caterpillar? Forgot there what, for a second. So I wanna make sure my tin foil is as big as my um, butterfly, and he's pretty much the same size. So what I'm gonna do on my tin foil is I'm going to color it. So I wanna think of like, what color do I want my butterfly to be? I think I'm gonna make the middle of him yellow and orange. So I'm gonna take the middle of my paper and I'm just gonna color back and forth yellow. And now I'm gonna do back and forth orange. And I'm gonna fill up my whole paper with colors. But when I'm making this guy, I want it to be symmetrical. So whatever I put over on this side, if I do a chunk there, I'm gonna do a chunk here. And I wanna fill up all my tin foil with all the different colors that I might wanna put on my butterfly. Okay, so I'm gonna put that here and that here. We don't want any part of our butterfly to go without color, so we really wanna think about all the colors that we could put together. And so maybe right here I'll put some lines. Those would be the same. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge just to make sure it's okay if your um, ink is drying. I'm gonna show you how to make this um, get, I'm gonna, we're gonna get it wet in a minute, okay? That's why I'm having you watch me first. I know it's not as fun as doing it yourself, but as soon as you see what happens, then you'll understand why I'm having you watch. Because you have to make sure you get all of the equipment ready, right? All of our materials before we start painting. 
this is just one of the ways. Another way is if you did make um, shaving cream paper earlier, you can go ahead and, again, and if you haven't made that, you can go to the video. I make it in the bunny rabbit video where we make it the spring rabbit. Um, if you haven't made shaving cream paper, go and watch that one. You need food coloring and shaving cream to make that. So I just really, I just wanna fill it up as much as I can because we're gonna basically make a print. We're gonna take this color that's on um, this paper and transfer it over um, by making a print of it. And how do we make a print? We get our paper wet and then we press our white paper on top of it. So I'm just coloring. You can take your time. You can put more colors on it. I just want to make sure that wherever I put one on one side, I want to put the same color on the other side. And um, the markers I have are a pack of 40 markers. So if you're trying to find the mark, same colors, I have a lot of colors in this marker container. So um, that's where I got that on Amazon. It was a birthday present to me. Pretty fun, huh? Okay. So now I have all my colors on here. The next thing I need to do is get a little bottle that sprays water. And um, believe me, I had to search high and low in my house to find something like this, but it works really well. So once I get this, I am gonna have a mom or dad, or they, they can sit with you while you do it. And I'm just gonna really spray my paper. Okay, it's nice and wet. I'm gonna take my butterfly and turn it upside down. Watch, here it goes. This is gonna be magic. We're just gonna press it. All right, I'm gonna flip it over, press it all over. Okay, watch, I'm gonna peel up my colors and look what it did to my butterfly. So now I have a butterfly that has painted paper on it, like Eric Carl might make, okay? He might do a painted paper and, and layer it on there, isn't that pretty? And then I can go ahead and once it dries, I can use my scissors and I can cut it out. And now I have a painted paper butterfly. All right, that's one way to do it. Here's another way. I know you're tired of watching, just watch. I know you're ready to paint. One more time. All right, we're gonna make another butterfly. So this one's gonna have a head and this one has a long body and I'm gonna make two big wings, one. Say that's the shape of an oval and here's another one. Too. Now remember what I told you, when I do it on one side, I have to go to the other side and do it there too. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna put any designs in this one this time, so I'm gonna show you another way of doing it. So I'm gonna show you how to make this pretty guy right here. You need a coffee filter for this one, a coffee filter and markers. So a coffee filter works very much like bleeding tissue paper does, so when we get color on it, it likes to spread all over the place and leave its mark. So I would get a coffee filter. You can see I've been coloring on mine. All right, get a coffee filter and you're gonna just color your coffee filter with your favorite colors. Now, I really think it's important that we do colors that are friends with each other. So my suggestion is do red, yellow, and pinks, or green, yellows, and blues. Um, because they're friendly and they will not, or at least put them next to each other so that as they bleed out, they will not turn into brown. So we do not want red and green by each other. Okay, and I'm just gonna, just like I did on my tin foil, I just wanna color this in with um, as many colors as I want. And I'm just gonna add those on there. Let's see, get some pink on here. Oops, don't get that too close to that color. Gotta put another color in between there. Let's put yellow in between because they're pretty good friends with both of those colors. Okay. And so I just am gonna fill up my paper with um, colors or my tissue paper. And then after it's all done, I wanna cut it out. So in, for instance, in this one right here, I cut strips and made long strips here. And these ones, these were actually triangles, but these were long strips. That's how I got those stripes on there. Kind of the same color blue there, isn't it? Let's see if we can get a purple on here. This one says it's called plum. Let's see what it does. Okay, so now I have, 
Oh my goodness, look at that. The lid doesn't want to go in there. All right, now I have my coffee filter and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into whatever shapes I want to. So I was talking about um, these ones on the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that. So put that up there out of the way so you can kind of see it. I'm gonna lay this back down. And then I would just take these coffee filter pieces and lay them on here. And you really just wanna lay it in however you've decided to cut it out. In pieces, um, if you wanna do big, big, Spots, I'll show you how you can do that too. So here I just put stripes. So I'll show you how the stripes work. Now these aren't going to be symmetrical on each side. I know that. Um, maybe I want to put a long stripe down the body of him. I might cut that off a little, make it shorter. So you're just going to fit your um, pieces into your butterfly. I'm going to, well, I'm going to cut a, a, a rounded shape out here. Can you see me do that? See how I just cut this rounded shape? So boys and girls, you can have parents help you cut shapes out, but I want you to look at how I'm doing this. And if you have more than one coffee filter, you can definitely make more pieces to go and color another coffee filter and fill your whole entire picture up with pieces. This doesn't have to just be where you have empty white spaces, okay? You can fill the whole thing up with cutouts. And um, I think you'll really like what happens when we're done. And that doesn't work. All right, so I'm gonna leave it just like this so you can see what happens. So you could cut lots and lots of circles. You could make it very much like Eric Carle made um, his butterfly, okay? And cut out all those different pieces and put them all over. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your magic water and paintbrush, okay? So I'm just gonna take water and I'm gonna put it down. As soon as I put it down, it's gonna start what we call bleeding. And the color is gonna come off of our coffee filter and onto our picture. And that's why it's important we put pick, pick colors together that are friendly, because if we put red and green next to each other, we're gonna get brown. All right, now see, I have a lot of white left over on this. My, my water is dirty, so you might wanna get some clean water to make this happen. But you wanna go ahead and just get as much water on there as possible and really get those colors bleeding. Okay, get it super, super wet. And then you can just let it sit for a minute or two. And like I said, if you have more coffee filters, you can go ahead and cut out more pieces and put them in those other empty spots so that your um, butterfly is completely full. Now, another thing you could do is you can lift these up and you can move them around. So let me show you. I could lift this up. Look how pretty that is. And if I wanted that color to go here, I could lay it there and look at, it would leave a print. Okay, so you can make it, I save, I save these. These make painted paper. So I save those for, oops, for later. So do you see all the different things you can do, boys and girls? Okay, so once you've decided what of, which of the butterflies you wanna make, whether or not you wanna make a butterfly that's like this one right here, or you wanna make a butterfly like this one here, then you can go ahead and get your paper from your sketchbook Ask your parents to get the supplies together and you can go ahead and create that butterfly and then cut it out when you're done, okay? So that when you're finished and you've cut it all out, you're gonna have a caterpillar and a butterfly, just like you would in the very hungry caterpillar. Okay, boys and girls, I wanna see what you make. So when you're done, have your parents send me a picture of it at Arts at Placer Academy. You can um, send me an email or you can send it to me on Facebook or Instagram so I can see what you're making. I cannot wait to see these wonderful things. And we should probably look one last time at our Very Hungry Butterfly so we know what we wanna create. All right, kindergartners and anyone else who's trying this, have a wonderful time. I cannot wait to see what you end up creating.